Greetings, physicists. This will be a section on how to solve complex circuit problems. So, what we're looking at here is basically can we draw a circuit diagram, and you're going to want to be very uh, fluent with this. So let's take a look here. They're asking which of these are the same circuits. So let's, let's look at a couple here. We've got a battery. This is another way to draw a battery. Come up. Hits a junction after the junction goes across a resistor one way, goes across a capacitor the other, there's another junction, and then we go back to the negative side. Okay, here we got a battery. Out of the battery to a junction, we go across a capacitor one way, across a resistor, and it comes back to a junction, and then to the end of the battery. These two are definitely the same, even though they don't look the same. First off, I'll point some things out. It does not matter whether you draw the capacitor here or on this part or on this part. That is all between those two points of the junction. So, or it's all between this junction and this junction. So wherever you draw it between those two uh, points does not make a difference. Also, it does not matter if you switch them in this case. Because whether, whether you're, I don't know if we're going to call the circuit A and this is circuit B, um, it's the same order. The battery, you come out the battery, you go to this junction, and the junction splits between a capacitor and a resistor. This junction splits between a resistor and a capacitor. Uh, it doesn't matter who's up and down in that case. That's not a big deal. So those are equivalent circuits. Now you might think by that logic that this guy down here, we'll call this number C, should be the same as well, but there's an important difference on this one, which is that the battery, all the current leaves, and then this resistor is on this loop here as opposed to this loop here. And that makes a difference because basically all of the current comes out of the battery and flows across that resistor, no matter what. Whereas up here, the current flows out of the battery and then some of it splits to go across the resistor and some of it doesn't. So this resistor is not getting all the current, this one is. So that is a difference. So that's not equivalent. And then let's look at this last one here. All right, this battery is connected. So watch, this is, this is trippy, but watch. The current flows out of the battery, hits a junction, from that junction, it splits to go across a capacitor and then splits to go across a resistor, comes back to this junction, goes back to the battery. That's the same as A and D. They just drew it in a different shape. Satisfy yourself that that is true. So you, the reason you need to be able to recognize this is that on a test, we can draw circuits however we want. And the question could have drawn it in a way that you, you are not used to seeing, but you need to recognize that all that really matters is that where you know which which element is on which part of the loop between which two junctions, etc. Okay, not do they draw it in a triangle or a square? What order the junctions are in? All right, going on. Now, thankfully, they drew this one in a friendly manner, but let's look at it. Calculate the current. Calculate the potential difference. Okay, so we're going to use. Kirchhoff's rule here. I'm going to start with, I think, the loop rule. And I'm going to pick a direction. And I'm going to pick, uh, generally speaking, when I do these, I like to start with the bigger battery and just use him. So he's positive and negative. So I'm going to pretend that current is going this way. So if I start from the negative terminal and go to the positive terminal of this battery, I am gaining voltage. That's an increase in voltage. The negative was like the bottom of the waterfall, the positive is the top. So I'm going up, I'm gaining those 9 volts. So I'm going to say positive 9 volts. Now the rule is that if I add them all up, if I add up all the voltages, that's going to equal 0. So every time I go across that battery, in the from, from negative to positive, I have gained that voltage. When I go across a resistor, if I'm going with the direction of the current, I am losing voltage. Well, what's the voltage across the resistor? Well, V equals IR. So the voltage across the resistor is just the current times the resistance. So I'm going to make myself uh, an equation here that if I sum all of those up, I get zero. So 
What, what is my first thing? Well, I go this way across that 9-volt battery, and since I'm going negative to positive, I gain those 9 volts. So that's positive 9 volts, okay? I go across this resistor, so I'm losing that voltage, or I'm losing that IR. Well, that's whatever the current is times that resistance, and that's 40 ohms. I go across this battery, but look what I'm doing. I'm going from the high side, the positive side, to the low side, the negative side. I'm dropping, so I'm actually losing that voltage. That's minus 6 volts. And then I'm going to go this way. And as I go across this resistor, whenever you go across the resistor with your current, you lose. So I'm losing IR. I'm losing I times 20. And then I get back to where I started. So I've made one complete circuit, and that has to equal zero. So equals zero. Well, let's put that all together. I have 9 volts minus 6 volts. I need to give myself some room here. 9 minus 6 is 3 volts. I have minus 40 and minus 20, so that's minus 60 ohms. And that has to equal 0. Add the 60. I get 3 volts equal... Oh, and, and sorry, there's an I in each of these terms. I need to leave that I there. Equals minus I times 60. So if I add that, that I60 to both sides, I will get I times 60 over here, ohms, and if I divide by 60, I get 3 over 60, which is 1 over 20, which is 0 0.05, 0 0.05 volts divided by ohms, and that's our current, so 0 0.05 amps is the current in that circuit. Okay. Good stuff. So come back up here. What is the potential difference across each resistor? Well, the potential difference across each resistor is just I times R. Well, there's no junctions here. I mean, you could. Well, I mean, I could draw some junctions, but there's no point at which the current splits. So if we were to do the junction rule, the sum of all the current going in to each junction has to equal the sum of all the current going out. But there's no splitting. So all the current that goes into this point has to go out of that point. Everything going in here has to come out over here. So essentially what that means in a, in a, a single loop circuit is that everybody gets the same current. Everybody gets that have that 1 over 20 amps or that 0 0.05 amps. So when I calculate here the V equals IR for these resistors, I'm just going to take each resistor and multiply it by that 0 0.05 amps. And that's a 40 and a 20. So let's do that down here. For the 40 ohm resistor, V equals 0 0.050 0 amps times 40 ohms, and what I'm going to do is move that decimal to the right and move that decimal to the left. That's fine. And get half times 4, or 2 amps. I'm sorry, 2 volts. So there's a 2 volt drop across that 40 ohm resistor, which means that when I go down to the other resistor, the V for the other resistor would be 0 0.05 amps times 20 ohms, well that's just going to be half of what this was. So if that was 2 volts, it's going to be 1 volt. And I know I said 1, but it's 1.0, it's 2.0. Now think about that. Technically that's a drop, so those are negative, because we lose those. And that should make sense when we go back up to our circuit. We started with 9, we lose, across this we lose 2, we lose 6 across this because we were going positive to negative, and we lose 1 over here. So 9 minus 2 minus 6 minus 1 is going to add up to 0. And thus we have the, the loop rule as well satisfied by that. So this works out. All right. Christmas lights. Christmas lights are, are connected in series. You know they're connected in series because when one of them burns out, they all burn out. And so we've got 50 of them on this string. 
and we want to know what is the potential difference across each one if we plug it into a 120 volt outlet. So let's draw that. Here's our 120 volts across bulbs. Bulbs are this symbol. Now I'm not going to draw 50 of them. I'm just going to say that you know that there are 50 of them in there. We'll say that's the 50th bulb in line and then it comes back here. So that's bulb one, bulb two, etc. What's the potential difference across each bulb if the string is plugged into a 120 volt outlet? Well, we have to assume that each of these lights has got the same resistance. It's essentially, right? We just have to. And they're in series, so there's only one loop here. So they are all getting the same current. Well, what's the rule? Well, the rule is on a closed loop, if we leave positive and go negative, so we start here, we go across, we're going to gain plus 120 volts. And then every time we go across a bulb, a bulb has a certain resistance, we're going to lose IR worth of uh, voltage. Well, I'm not going to actually write that as IR because we don't know the current or the resistance. I'm just going to write that we lose some voltage across the first bulb and we also lose some voltage across the second bulb. But all of them I mean, just keep in mind, they are all losing IR, and everyone gets the same current in this loop, but they are all the same bulb, so they all have the same resistance. So they are all losing the same voltage. So if there are 50 of them, dot, 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 minus the V across 50, all that has to add up to zero. Well, these are all the same voltage, so it's just V, V, V. So there's 50 Vs. So I'm just going to combine those terms. It's going to be 120 volts minus 50 times whatever the voltage of each bulb is has to equal zero. So if I add the 50 to the other side and then divide by, add 50 V and then divide by 50. So it's the, the voltage should be 120 over 50. Cancel a zero. 12 over 5 is 2 and 2 fifths, 2.4. So they are 2.4 volts each. Okay, that's, that's not too bad. All right, what do we got here? What current is provided by the battery in the circuit below? Well, if you were doing this as just a straight up parallel circuit, you could get the equivalent resistance here, right? And the equivalent resistance of this circuit is... 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 equals 1 over the total resistance, which is going to be kind of a pain. But I think we can do this faster just by doing a couple of, of loop rules here. So, the voltage, if I go around this loop, the voltage has to add up to zero, but there's only two elements in the loop. If I gain 12 volts across this battery, I have to lose 12 volts across this resistor. So I'm going to do the V equals IR for that resistor, for resistor 58 ohms. Well, the voltage across it has to be 12 volts. And we're going to divide that by the resistance of 58 and set that equal to I. Twelve over fifty-eight. All right, and so the current there is zero point two zero seven amps. I'm going to do the same thing for seventy. It's just going to be twelve divided by seventy, and twelve divided by seventy. Is that a perfect? I think that's fifty. No, that's it would be twelve over sixty. All right, let's do twelve. Divided by 70 is 0.171. Okay, and then last one would be 12 over 42. So let's do that. 12 over 42, 0.286. So this guy is getting 0.286 amps. 
Okay, so for each individual loop, I just kind of figured, because they're all, essentially this loop is just going to include this battery and this resistor. So we can also do V equals IR, and the voltage across here has to be the same as the voltage across here. So that's how I'm calculating I. Well, now let's think about it. The current, all the current comes out of the battery here. That's total current I. It gets to here and splits. And then it gets to here and it splits. But it all has to come back in the other side. So essentially, if I add up how much current goes across here, across here, and across here, those are the three individual splits. And I know them. I know it's this current, this current, and this current. So if I add those things together, I should get the total it's going to be coming back in here. So let's do that. I have my 0.286 plus my 0.207 plus my 0.171. And I'm getting something like 0 0.66, which really this was a two sig fig problem. So the total current is about two thirds of an amp. Uh, provided by the battery, because the battery essentially has to provide current to each of those resistors separately, because they're all on their own separate loop. Okay, so that 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 was I was able to solve that entire problem without doing the one over R plus one over R, which can be tedious. Uh, so I'm just using Kirchhoff's laws here to save some time. All right, initially. The switch below is open, and I didn't draw this one, so let's draw it. So we're going to have a bulb. This is here. We're going to have a junction with a switch that is open. We're going to have a bulb here, and another junction that leads to this bulb here. So three bulbs, bulb A. B, C. And initially the switch is open, no current flows through that part of the loop. A and B are equally bright, which must mean they have the same resistance. Uh, because if you think about it, while the switch is open, this is a series circuit. It's just that loop. Nothing goes through the second loop on top. And in a series circuit, in order for you to have the same brightness, you have to have the same resistance. So they must be the same bulb. All right. So what happens to the brightness of A and B when the switch is closed? Well, let's think about that. When I close the switch, I've given another pathway for the charge to go. The charge all the current, it came out before, and it used to only have one place to go, which was through bulb B and back. But now, instead of just being able to go through bulb B, I've given it bulb C as well. I've given it another whole pathway. And so I'm lowering the resistance. It's like opening another lane on the freeway. When you open another lane on the freeway, the traffic goes down. Same thing here. Or, sorry, not the traffic. Yeah, the traffic goes down because there's more room for the cars, but it, they speed up. So the total current coming out of that battery should be larger. But let's also remember that we said all the bulbs were identical. And when you have a path like this, we can be, we can be uh, specific, right? If I were to just take um, B and C here, let's, let's take this. There's a junction, and it's got... B on one side and C on the other, like so. And then the junction closes on the other side. Together, this, this piece has less resistance than just B by himself, right? Because it's we've widened the freeway. We've essentially doubled the width of the freeway. So this piece together should have half the resistance of B. And this piece is connected directly in series with A. So what we had before was A connected to just B, 
and that was more resist B was more resistance than A connected to both of them together. So A is now sharing If you had if you had a battery and we'll do this connected to a resistor of resistance R and another resistor of resistance R and that was voltage V they would both get V over 2 worth of voltage they would both get half of it if you change so now let's rewire it here if you change those resistors such that this is R and this is R over 2 then let's think about this. We can do the loop rule here. We gain V, positive V going across this. As we go across resistor 1, that's minus IR. And as we go across this resistor, that's minus IR over 2. And that has to add up to 0. So. So the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be twice as big as the voltage across this resistor, right? Just looking at those right there. So then this guy is going to be getting the same current but a bigger voltage. So this would be V, and this would be, well, it's, it's essentially, you're going to get this, right? You're going to get V here equal to, if we call them resistor 1, it's going to be V1 plus V1 over 2. And you're going to wind up getting uh, a third each, right? So this is this resistor here gets two thirds of the of the total voltage, and this resistor here gets one third of the total voltage of the battery. So, and remember, power power is what we perceive as brightness. So P equals V I. Both of these resistors get the same current, but this resistor is getting two thirds of the voltage, whereas before. If we go back to before, he only got half of it back when he was in series and the switch was open. So A should get brighter. A should have more power when we connect, when we close uh, the circuit, when we close the loop, close the switch. Okay, how does the brightness of A and B change when the switch is closed? A should get brighter. B is now operating at a third of the voltage that it used uh, a third of the voltage when it used to be operating at a voltage of V over 2. So the brightness of B should go down. So A should get brighter, B should get dimmer, but these two should be the same. These two are getting the same voltage. They're both getting V over three. So C should be the same as B and less than A. Because anything that's in, in parallel should be getting the same voltage. Okay, Whew. that's rough. Lots to think about there. All right, hopefully this will help you in solving Kirchhoff's law problem.